Hi guys, Big P here again from Brains All Performance. So we've got something special for you today, the Porsche Cayenne 3 litre turbo diesel. This being the 958 model is the successor to the previous 957 which was also featured with a 3 litre diesel engine and cracking car these. Quite a big heavy car but when you're inside you can't feel it. It has a 3 litre turbo diesel engine manufactured by Volkswagen Audi which produces around 242 brake horsepower and manages to push this tank of a car to 60 in about 7.4 seconds which I think is quite impressive for such a big car it, uh, it's actually about 250 kilos lighter than its uh, predecessor uh, the 957 and that was due to some modifications they made to the transfer case or something along those lines and uh, that made it a little bit lighter and a little bit quicker off the mark uh, there's quite a few modifications to this compared to the 957 uh, in terms of engine and drivability and they're quite a nice car to drive show you around the car we'll take it for a little drive see what you guys think but to be honest for what you can pick one of these up for nowadays i think it's an absolute steal and such a great car for the money obviously you're gonna have your uh, maintenance costs and things like that associated with the label the badge it being a porsche the premium will be on there but at the same time it's quite a rewarding drive and it's a really nice suv to own if you can afford to buy one and run one it's quite good prices of these now ranging between sort of 17,000 plus depending on the age and the condition you can buy a nice 958 for the 17 18,000 pound range being an early model 2011 etc this particular car being a 2014 uh, it does boast quite a nice uh, specification and uh, has quite a nice interior I'll go through the car with you show you the exterior and then we'll take it for a little drive like and subscribe if you like what we do and uh, if you have any comments any questions drop them in the comments below and uh, I'll be glad to get back to you let's check out the car see what you guys think
it is quite a striking design the 958 compared to the 957 I mean um, uh, the modifications mostly being at the front end where you can see how they've changed that front bumper put the LED daytime running lights in which are quite a nice feature uh, compared to the the ones that used to go sort of that top to bottom rather than side to side um, and I think that uh, does give it quite a nice look a lot of these do come with a sport body kit this particular one doesn't have it but um, that is a nice extra As you can see it has the uh, headlights which are very similar to the ones on the Panamera which are quite nice and a uh, nice large Porsche emblem on the front which is a lovely feature and that nice big grill at the front which lets the air get sucked in and uh, keep the uh, turbo nice and cool has the being the diesel it has the diesel emblems on the front wings as you can see here um, and then this particular model has 21 inch Porsche 911 turbo two wheels on there uh, the red painted calipers which are a really nice look give that car a lovely stance as you can see see there as well which is lovely going towards the back of the car it has these nice big LED lights at the back which are really nice uh, and uh, set the car off nice big spoiler on the back of the boot there and uh, a big large Porsche Cayenne badge at the back and two really nice dual ex ex exhausts uh, which do turn out quite nice and do look good and it has, has some nice little extras like these little metal trims on the bottom which gives it a nice finish rear wash wipe going into the boot you've got quite a large boot area there the middle seat folds down and so do the, the actual side seats to give you a really large load area if you need it this here is ideal to sort of cover any things you've got sitting in the boot um, and once that boot's shut then nobody can see what's in there uh, and if you've got ski bags or golf clubs or anything like that they can go straight through the middle there which is ideal uh, it comes with the power outlets in the back you've got nice little cubby spaces here which allow you to store any uh, little bits and pieces you've got the load anchors four of them in the back so if you had to tie something down you could which is quite good and then there's this area here which is ideal stops um, anything getting scraped or scratched because it keeps it sort of elevated off this rear panel here which is quite nice under here there's a little bit more storage if you've got a spare wheel this car doesn't actually have one um, it comes with the inflation kit obviously and that's uh, there but that, that's a nice little space there to store extra bits and pieces if you needed to which is a nice feature to have this car doesn't actually have the uh, auto close boot but I've seen a lot of them do um, but not a big deal really for me you got the nice painted calipers and the big 21 inch Porsche Turbo 2 wheels I think originally these wheels were a diamond cut but um, these have actually been uh, powder coated in a gunmetal grey which I think is quite nice sets this car off Oh, hi guys, sorry, I do apologize, got to be carried away with the ride there. Bit of Sidhu Musial in the background, you know, I uh, thought I'll enjoy it whilst it's a lovely summer ride, but you know, driving this now with the air conditioning on and the tunes going off, I have to say. It's an absolutely delightful place to be. An absolute beauty of a car. I mean, you can buy a car like this for sort of that money, 20 grand, let's say. And I know it might be nearly what, I mean, 20 years old. Uh, not 20, sorry, 10 years old. Uh, being a 2013, let's say. And you got a car which is 10 years old, which was probably around 60 grand to buy new and you can pick this car up now for probably less than one third of what the car was new and the depreciation obviously has been massive but you're gonna get really a 60 grand's worth of a car for that money and I know it's probably done 80,000 miles on and it's 10 years old but when you're driving this you can't feel it I mean my aircon's on it's got to be what 
it's 20 degrees outside and you know it's nice inside it's nice and warm nice and cool absolutely lovely and you feel like you're driving a hundred grand car let's face it when you're sitting in here the way this car's dressed and how comfortable this car is I don't think you're gonna have any complaints I mean this particular car has a spring suspension setup if you was to buy the ones with the air suspension I believe they're even more comfortable than this but I mean you can feel the bumps a little bit in this but I don't think it's anything to complain about and in my opinion it's one less thing to go wrong because a lot of these big cars on the air suspension if you look at their old Range Rovers and things like that now the biggest thing the suspension the biggest thing they suffer from is the suspension because the air suspension bags leak and the compressors fail and whatnot so sometimes you're probably better off going with the spring setup but that's entirely up to yourself what you want for the car but generally this car doesn't have the spring the, 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 the air suspension setup it's a spring setup and it feels absolutely fine it feels very comfortable and keeping in mind it's sitting on 21 inch wheels if that if they were on 18s or something like that smaller Porsche wheels it would be a lot more comfortable um, in terms of sound of the vehicle sitting in here you wouldn't be able to say this car is a diesel you would drive this and you would think it doesn't even sound like a diesel it, when you sort of push it a little bit and floor it it has a nice sound to it the, the exhaust gives off a nice sound which it doesn't sound like a diesel sound if you like obviously I know these sort of modern diesel engines are a lot more refined than they used to be but still coming to it it does sound a lot nice a lot nicer than a, a lot of diesel cars that you can buy these days sound so generally even where you're sitting in the car it's a really nice position you know your armrest you, where your hand sits on the gear stick it's really nice this the, the steering wheel feels comfortable it feels like it where it wants to be and these seats I mean they're unexplainable it's like it's like the seats when you when you're in an S class or something like that it, they are very comfortable and uh, I'm not just saying it they are they're not like sort of hard or anything they they sort of you just fall into them it's like being on a nice recliner sofa they're absolutely beautiful generally drive wise I can't fault it I don't have any sort of things that I can say yeah it's clunky or it doesn't drive right or the engine's not sort of uh, responsive I mean just driving around within comfort now and you know you put your foot down and it, even from there it wants to go you know you've got, you've got vehicles in front which you can't floor it carry on but what I'm saying is it's responsive enough for the type of vehicle it is obviously there's a sport mode as well that you can put it into there's a traction control mode there's a hill descent here you've even got uh, start stop off so if you don't like the start stop system you can switch it off everything is here to your hands you don't have to go into your screens or anything like that to find a setting like the newer cars I mean uh, you drive these sort of more modern cars now and even to sort of turn your heaters on you have to flick through about four screens and uh, in, on the Porsche everything is to your hands it's, all the switches are here your climate controls here there's about 3,000 buttons here it's like an aeroplane cockpit it's absolutely amazing and this light setup here it's really sporty the way they've done it all and a lot of it is similar to what was in the Panamera which is probably why it looks so nice to me because I, I've, I, I've had a Panamera turbo which I thought was an absolutely beautiful car as well and uh, generally it's a really nice setup you've got you've got the uh, manual mode here on your steering wheel where, which are similar to the sort of paddles but uh, just buttons which move back and forward on your steering wheel which allow you to change gears manually if you need to and at the bottom here you've got your 4x4 range as well so you can turn it into an off-road mode or keep it on on-road road I mean I haven't been able to take this off-road so I can't comment on how good they are but reading reviews etc they say that you know it, it does the job where it needs to so generally quite good but I think most people who are going to buy a Porsche Cayenne probably won't be uh, thinking of off-roading too much and it might be the odd fun Sunday or something but otherwise I don't think it's the uh, perfectly suited car especially not with this interior um, can you imagine driving through loads of mud and then getting out to uh, put a tow roll pod or something and jumping back into this uh, these carpets with these beige carpets uh, 
I don't think uh, I don't think the missus will be very happy if you turn car in any case. But uh, generally, absolutely uh, lovely drive and uh, very comfortable. You could drive around in this and cruise around, and for a 17, 18 grand car, you you know you'd have the you'd have the sort of uh, reputation of driving a nice top end vehicle, a luxury SUV. <coughs> excuse me, uh, as they would call it these days, and uh, it, it is really a top-end car, and I, I think if anybody's looking at buying a Cayenne, I definitely think it, it's something you should go and take for a drive and check it out, because you won't be disappointed, not with this, I mean, compare it to sort of other SUVs within its range that you can buy for both that kind of money, and they won't drive as good as this, because it, it, Porsche naturally has a lot better drivability in terms of it has that sports feel that handling that quality of interior and uh, yeah other vehicles in the range might be you know equally as good in certain aspects but as an overall package i don't think you can beat the porsche cayenne in terms of an suv it's an absolutely beautiful car especially for that kind of money i mean unless obviously you're going to go out and buy a newer version of like let's say a range of sport or something like that yeah you know that might be you know on a similar level but if you was to buy a sort of 2011 or 2012 Range Rover Sport compared to this I think this would beat it all day long in every way because it's a so much better car and uh, so much more comfortable has a lot better drivability handles a lot better acceleration is seamless and uh, it ticks a lot of boxes the only one thing that I would say um, about this car that um, <coughs> isn't great is these side mirrors because you can't see a lot through them uh, they don't actually cover the whole body of the car so you have to sort of play around with them depending on what you're doing so when you're driving they're okay but if you're trying to park or something like that you have to have a little play around with them and if your particular car hasn't got a reversing camera then it's not great even with the rear view mirror there parking up the they have the sort of projected projection on the screen which shows you the front to back which is quite useful but it's nice if you can get one with a reversing camera, which is great. And um, in terms of fuel economy, I mean, uh, I filled this up in London for uh, about, a, I think it was £1.60 a litre at the time. <coughs> and uh, I drove about 150 miles uh, from London back to uh, Shropshire. And then I did about total I did 370 miles on a 90 pound tank I put 90 pound fuel in which at £1.60 uh, was the current price at the time and I did about 370 miles which I think brings it to plus 30s which is about 33 34 mpg which I think for a big car like this ain't bad I mean you know I've had five series BMWs which have done similar mpg so realistically 30 32 even it's not bad at all these days anything uh, sort of above 30 for a big car like this is a good uh, range to be in and I know 150 miles of that was motorway driving but um, a good 220 miles of that was city driving so as a mixture a 30 mpg range I think is generally quite good so I would say they're bad for, uh, for fuel economy either and uh, if you're constantly on the motorway then it's even better because you'll always be getting that sort of MPG, which is good. <coughs> yeah, so generally, as a overall, I would say, if you're looking at a Porsche Cayenne, something similar, definitely put this in your choices. It's a lovely car, and a lot of car for your money. Um, I would, for that kind of price range because they're very close to the 957s I would go for the 958 which I think is worth paying a little bit more for is it a better car obviously if you can afford something a little bit more newer then yeah that's even better but this with the 3 litre diesel engine um, apparently it's more efficient than the even the 3.6 hybrid uh, in terms of carbon emissions and things like that so it's quite good generally overall but so nice to drive and the audio system in this is unbelievable the sound quality the bass line everything it's absolutely amazing so yeah i think i'm going to leave you guys to it and if you've got any questions 
anything you'd like to know about the car drop it in the comments below it's a lovely car to drive and I think I'm just gonna enjoy my music and go for a short drive and uh, see how it goes so like and subscribe if you like what we do and um, any questions you have like I said drop me a message and I'll be happy to help thanks guys for your time and see you soon loads more great content coming through check it out see you soon take care